I don't think poverty is a taboo topic in campaigns, but it it doesn't happen for a lot of reasons. There's there's the perception, correct or incorrect, that poor people don't vote, poor people don't move the needle. So as someone at the Catholic Conference was saying the other day, you would think that Matthew 25 told us whatsoever you do into the middle class, you know, it so shall be done unto me. Um, because really this campaign, we've talked an awful lot about the middle class and not about people who are really on the margins. And there is that perception that uh, they're not involved in the process, although they certainly are affected by those policy decisions. You know, in 2000, as everybody knows, Ralph Nader really was considered the spoiler in the race, and I think that's a correct perception because, you know, Al Gore only lost by 537 votes in Florida, and had Ralph Nader not taken more than 2% of the vote there, it, it, Al Gore would have moved into the White House and, you know, look at the... Uh, what a different world we'd have today. Probably we would not have gone to Iraq. Certainly we would have had a functioning EPA for those eight years when a lot of people who I know who work at the EPA didn't feel that we did have one. Uh, this year you have Jill Stein running uh, as a Green Party candidate. Again, polling at about 2%, though she will be on about 85% of the ballots in the country. Uh, it, <laughs> I understand that that the importance of having more than, you know, vanilla and French vanilla on the menu. And so, on the other hand, then you have people who feel very strongly that all these third-party candidates could ever be is a spoiler. I mean, some other third-party candidates who've made a huge difference, look at Ross Perot's candidacy. Uh, Bill Clinton would probably never have been elected without him running. So. I think these candidates have a lot to offer the debate, even though at this point in time, they're certainly, you know, they know they're not going to be moving into the White House. Women have certainly been targeted in this election, but unfortunately, almost all of the pitches to women on the Democratic side have focused pretty narrowly on abortion rights. And even now that you see the gender gap narrowing in a lot of the battleground states, the response of the Obama campaign has really been to talk even more, more ads, more talk from surrogates, more talk from the candidate and from, can and from Mrs. Obama about reproductive rights. Uh, I think that what you see and what the polling shows is that women have many more concerns, a lot broader concerns than that, and so I personally don't see the numbers uh, behind their decision to feel that, well, that's a woman's issue, thus that's what women vote on. That, that really hasn't been shown in the polling, so I'll be interested to hear after the election why they made that decision they did to do that. Women vote, have said, have told pollsters they're voting on the economy. I mean, you know, when they say that, or the ads and again, the, the, the rhetoric that's used makes it seem like we really are one issue voters when that's simply not the case. And I think in this economy, women as well as men really are looking at that as, as the top concern.